of unsalted cottage cheese. I saw a man killed in the street today. It made me sick. Yeah. No cream, no sugar, right? Mm. Arnold, I didn't come here for coffee. What did you come for? What? The $30 I owe you. I don't want your $30. I don't have it. This is what you come to tell me. That the money that you owe me, you don't have. Arnold, I've discovered that in this life nobody cares. I care. And what do you do about it? I put up with you. I keep Fanny comfortable. The comfort she's in, nobody should know from. Look, Michigan, I've told you before, get yourself another doctor. I can't offer you what you want. I can't perform miracles. How's I? Hey, where are you going? Oh, Fanny is waiting for me. Arnold, I can't take any more. You're telling me this is a doctor? No, not as a doctor. As a friend. Arnold, you know I'm not a person who talks so easily about his suffering. You don't have to remind me of this. But I must tell you something that I can't say to anyone, not even to my wife. I don't want to live anymore. I know it's a sin to talk that way. But the hurt in me is so great, I want to scream. I don't understand why God has turned against me. At least if I were able to understand. He's finishing me. God is finishing me. I can't take any more. What, uh, what kind of work do you do? I was a tailor. Well, you're not working now. I mean, you're unemployed? I don't work because of my back. Well, how long has your wife been ill? 
Two years. I don't have hope. Well, what about this, uh, this daughter, Ruth, here? I don't see her anymore. Well, does she live in the state? Well, can we get in touch with her? I mean, do you have an address for her? I don't have an address for her. She married an Italian. For me, she's dead, finished. You understand what I'm telling you? Yes, I understand what you're saying. You're finished with your daughter, Ruth, because she didn't marry a, a Jew. Now, why are you applying for welfare assistance? Your physical injury, your wife's illness, I mean, what? God. God. My tailor shop caught on fire. I wasn't carrying enough insurance. So God cursed me with a fire. Mr. Mishkin, I am sure God couldn't care less whether or not you paid your insurance. Don't be too sure. I know him better than you. First, he destroyed my shop I spent a lifetime working for. Then my back so I couldn't sit at the machine. And then my daughter out of nowhere marries a bum who doesn't know what it is to work. And my wife, Fanny, who took care of a house for 40 years without complaint, suddenly collapses into a bed. This is not an accident. This is a curse. I don't expect too much help from God. I rely on you. Yes, well, we'll send an investigator. With my luck and God's help, on the way he'll break his leg. Blackie said she didn't mind. Now, not you, dear. Just, just little daddy over here. He's going to take... Oh! Did you see what I saw? Green stuff. Look at that. hundred dollars. And another hundred dollars. That's all I'm going to show you. Uh, no, 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 that's all I'm going is to show you. Is it you? No, you don't mind if Who I else? Something, do you? There's two hundred dollars, and there may be more inside there, but I wouldn't show you any more, June. Lotus, make the television lower. Do you want Beautiful to outside, the but very cold. All right, so why don't we open up the curtain to shore what she could have had? She kept the money instead. And How are you feeling out. today, finally? Quite yes, sir. Better? I'll put away the shopping. I'll be right back. Boris, you went to the welfare? Yes. I didn't do it. So? Huh? I asked so. Uh, so my case is progressing. What does it mean, progressing? Why does it mean progressing? It means that everything I tell them now is put down in ink. And then from the ink, it's transferred into the typewriters. It's very, very complicated. So? So, this is progressing. I have another curtain. You took the medicine? I don't want the medicine. I'll fill the hot water bag for you. I'm hot enough. You're going to keep the money and... Sit down. ...who won a big prize, and here she is. From the Sunflower State herself, right? Why don't you take the medicine? Because it makes me sick. I'm going to get to Helene just a moment, but during that great day that we had in Wichita, it started off with a parade in the morning... You told them about your back. I told them. They know of my sickness? They know. And Ruthie. I told them everything. So, when are they going to help us? If they tell me, I'll tell you. With them, relief is not so immediate. That's part of the costume there, without the top on it. You want I should open a window for you? No. We've got the ingredients to make a cake right now, because we've got some eggs. You watch the television. I'll go read the paper. I'm going to have one for each of you three girls. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Oh, yes. And uh, these are Marcy. Marcy. Angela, Simon, Julie. What? Open the window a little bit. Open the window a little bit. Tell me which egg you would like, and uh, then we're going to tell you about how this deal works. Uh, which the phone company call. Which one do you want? For what? They want the phone on yes, Tuesday. Or the bill. Why did you tell them? I told them you'd pay on Monday. With what? Morris, I, I need my phone. I'm here all alone. Suppose I need someone. What will I do? 
If they take the phone away. No, they'll risk it from service. $200. What did you say? I said I'll pay the bill somehow. She's going to keep the egg. She turned down my $250 offer. She turned down the curtain, and you could have had eggs for a long time. Because look at we had back So then. many hours watching, it gives you a headache. It's a dollar to us. Mrs. Grassman comes by today with little Sammy, who's got his first haircut. Mazel tov. <laughs> Mrs. Grossman is so excited. Anyway, she wants you should cut down Mickey's blue suit for Sammy. You should make it the same size as the brown. Morris. Hmm? You heard what I said. I heard. No. Better tell her that she should pay me what she owes me for cutting down the brown. I don't do any more work for her until she pays me for the brown. Was. She's a very poor woman. Her son is away in the army. Her husband is dead. Oh? Uh, so I told her she should forget about paying for the brown just a little something for the blue. <laughs> so she's going to crochet me a bed jacket. Let her crochet for Sammy a blue suit. Mishki. What are you talking about? What are you laying there and telling me? They're taking the phone out on Tuesday because I can't pay the money? You lay in bed drinking medicine like wine? How dare you tell me she should forget about paying me for the brown suit? How dare you talk like that? I won't sit at that machine for a bed, Jack. I won't kill myself for nothing! You built up in the Please. Fanny. Yes. Yes. God should help me. I don't know. We were talking the way we always talk. Will you come? Thank you. Thank you, Arnold.
Dear God, sweetheart, did I deserve that this should happen to me? Give Fanny back her health. Help now or tomorrow is too late. This I don't have to tell you. It's a spoon. So it's a spoon. That's what I said. I could kill you with this spoon. <laughs> oh, man, let's get on to it. Don't move! Once more? Huh? You all right? I want to talk to you. My wife is very sick. I know. I'd like to see her. Go ahead. She's asleep. Asleep. I know. Who are you? What are you doing? I was sent here to help you. I know you're from someplace. I don't think so. You're from the welfare. I applied today. You did? I know the junior wife really needs assistance. Uh, things are very bad with us. Forgive me for not hearing your knock, but I was very nervous calling the doctor for my wife. He's coming at any minute. I didn't know before that help was so immediate. Sometimes it's quicker than you think. Excuse me, I didn't catch your name. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I have here a small piece of paper that I must read to you. It's 
a little ceremony. <clears throat> if I may, insofar as one is able to identify myself, I bear the name Alexander Levine. Levine? Levine. Levine? You may be Jewish? All my life. I was, willingly. You ain't Jewish anymore. Let me read the paper. I have recently been disincarnated into an angel. Into a what? I have recently been disincarnated into an angel. This is from the welfare department. No. No, Mr. Mishkin, I don't come from the welfare. I come from God. You should be sure that. As such, I offer you my humble assistance. If to offer is within my province, an ability in the best sense. Oh, now I understand. I'll sign the paper. Oh. There's nothing to sign, Mr. Mishkin. All you have to do is listen. I, I, but come here, man. They gave me this to read. You can't make it out. The writings. But the I am. I am what I am granted to be, and at present the completion is in the future. A bona fide angel of God. Again with the angel. A bona fide angel of God. Continue. Within prescribed limitations not to be confused with the numbers of... Members, members. Members, members of any particular sect, order, or organization here on Earth operating under a similar name. This is what you came into my house to tell me? Yeah. This is your message to me from God? That's it. As I tell God when you see him, I appreciate the message. Now maybe I think I'll go check on my wife. No, wait. I told you she's all right. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you, man. I'm here to help you. I am an angel of God. I'll tell you something, Mr. Uh, Levine. Uh, Levine. Mr. Levine. By me, angels have wings. So, when you have the wings, you'll come back and we'll talk. I'm not coming back. This is it. There's no tomorrow, it's today or never. So why don't you just forget that wing shit, huh? Without wings, there are no angels. We're not through yet. I have another paper here. Good, read it. Under certain circumstances, we lose privileges and prerogatives upon returning to Earth. We lose privileges and prerogatives upon returning to Earth. Go ahead. No matter for what purpose or endeavoring to assist whosoever. This me sugar. That's the scroll. You can't throw away a message from God. Pick it up. I don't have to take this crap. I am an angel and I was sent here to help you, nigga. Nigga? That's the way a Jewish angel talks? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Look, Miss can sit down. Let's start all over again. Everything's... So without wings, how did you get down here? I was transmitted. Uh-huh. If you're Jewish, say the blessing for bread. Amen. You have a very good accent. Are you circumcised? 
Are you circumcised? Of course I'm circumcised. Well, then maybe I think you're Jewish. But in the meantime, will you do me a favor? Transmit yourself someplace else. What about the rest? What rest? Part about being an angel. It's enough that I believe you're Jewish. It's not enough. I can save you, Mishkin. I can help you and your wife if you'd only believe in me. I believe you. You say you're an angel. I believe you. But, but now you must leave this house immediately. No, but you don't believe me. Because if you did, something would happen. What should happen? I don't know. Something. Something. Something wonderful. Something only I could do for you. All right. Make a miracle. What? Make a miracle. What kind of miracle? Any kind of miracle. Walk into the stove, make a flood of seltzer, fill the icebox full of halavas, something, anything. Go ahead. I'm a miskin. I can't make a miracle. I can't even make a near miracle. I'm on probation. And how long I stay on depends on you. Me? What have I got to do with it? Everything. Listen, miskin. If you would believe in me, I could pass a miracle. Oh, no, no, no. First you pass a miracle, then I'll believe you're an angel. No. First you believe in me, then I'll pass a miracle. I believe you're a faker. Say that again. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Levine. Levine, let me ask you something. If God would send me an angel, why a black one? What did you say? To a white person comes a white angel. When you die, if they let your fat white ass through the burly gates, when you see God, you ask him. But until then, you take what he sends you, and that's me. down here by God to help me. He's a maniac, although I don't think he's dangerous. He also says he's Jewish. He's, he's in there. I'm crazy. Yes. Well, you'll be all right. Now, I'll take a look at Fanny. What exactly happened? Well, Fanny, yes. She started to cough and cough. So she coughed, I thought she was going to die. That's why I called you. Hello, Hardner. What a pleasant surprise. You call me all this way because you say it's urgent. This is urgent? Finally, you were so sick. She was so sick. She had an attack. She was coughing worse than I ever heard her cough. I had an attack? But now I am well. I don't understand how that could be. I don't mind killing myself in traffic in an emergency. But do me a favor, Michigan. Don't kill me for no reason. Let me live. Now, how are you feeling, Fanny? I was dreaming such a nice dream. Yeah, just give me your hand. Such a wonderful dream, Arnold. I was floating in the sky. And then I was on some beach. And children were played in the sand with their pails. Such sweet children. The sun was so bright. And the water was so clear. And everybody was so... Quiet and peaceful. Such a nice day, Arnold. I could have stayed there forever. All right, Fanny, don't talk so much. She even stopped breathing. Out. Out. Now, 
I just finished my examination, and then I want you to go to sleep. I want you to get some rest. a million miles away and all I wanted to do was to hear your voice. They're looking for you, Al. There isn't a bum in Harlem that doesn't have the word from Crazy Andrew. I've been standing in front of my place all day waiting for you. Are they hurting you? Look. Have you got their money? Have you got the $1,500 you owe that woman? Forget them. What? Look, it doesn't matter anymore. All right. That's fine. But don't you know they're going to kill you? Ain't nobody gonna kill me no more. Look, I want to see you. I want you to come to me. Why? I'm I'm doing something, and I can't uh, I can't explain it to you on the phone. No, I'm sorry, Al. I uh, I don't want to see you. Look, Sally, I love you. I told you before, Alexander, I don't want to see you. Please, baby, just one more time. No, leave me alone now. Look, there's a place near you, man. It's called Murray's Bar. It's on 68th Street and 1st Avenue. Meet me there in an hour. I'm not coming now. See you in an hour. Not coming. It's fine, so don't call me again for nothing. Now he's in there. Who's in there? The maniac. Why don't you call the police? I can't, he's using the telephone. Where are you going? Let me look. The door is locked. Now he won't be there. It's crazy. Let's get rid of him. Yeah, I wonder if I could use the telephone. Thank you. How's Fanny? As God. Would you like me to leave the room? Uh, what? I mean, if you got a call, I could go in the living room. Oh, oh no, no. No, you, you stay where you are. She wants a glass of cold water. Get rid of him. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Fleischman. Yes, um, the emergency is over. Yes, I'm coming back. Keep the bed warm. I have the doctor here, Arnold Berg. 
I'm Alexander Levine. Well, I understand you're an angel. Yeah. Uh, from God. Does it surprise you? Well, why should it surprise me? Well, I mean, most people would be surprised. Well, I've seen too much to be surprised. <laughs> no, you tell me you're an angel, I believe you. Just like that. Just like that. And you've come to the right place. My patient floats between two worlds. Now she wants a hot drink. What's the matter with it, Doc? You don't know. No. Well, they should keep you better informed up there. All right. I will give you a free consultation. You what? So, I say I will give you a free consultation. So if you want to help, you can appreciate so what, what lies before you. So that if what? Now, just, 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 just. Let me cut the lemon. Oh. Call me when it's ready. Oh, what was I saying? You were just about getting ready to give me something for free. Oh, a free consultation. Yes. Well, the left ventricle of my patient's heart is very weak. Of what? The left ventricle. You know, you know what the left ventricle is. No, I don't. Uh, here, open your jacket. Come on, open your jacket. I'll show you. Ah, the left ventricle. Here, it's very weak, and it's not accepting the full return of blood from the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins. Now, the fluid which should be flowing out into the heart is backing up into the pulmonary vessels, causing pulmonary edema or pleural effusion. Now, the case has progressed to the point where fluid lies in the lower tissues of the lungs, or for all I know, in the lower pleural cavity. Do you understand? No. Well, my friend Mishkin has a wife whose arteries wouldn't keep a grasshopper going for two hours. Uh. Mishkin, come on, look out. Many Mishkin has progressed beyond the hope of doctors, lunatics, and angels. Many Mishkin, God himself, is too late. You see, there are no miracles today. No magic. After 30 years' experience, Thirty years in practice. I tell you straight out, you say that you're an angel? Yeah. Well, these days, all of us need angels more than we admit. You know, we sit here, we mighty men of medicine, boasting of our achievements. Come in here, man. All right. Now I won't tell you something. He can't do anything for your old lady. There ain't a bag of medicine he's got can do a thing. Not a pill, not a needle, nothing. I'm going to tell you something else, Mr. Doctor. I haven't understood one word you've been putting on me. But I know one thing. I can do something you can't do. So you jive, mother. Why don't you just take your little bag of pills and just split? Shame on you. That's the way you talk to a doctor. That's the respect you show to a doctor. What? Get out of here. I want you to get out of here. Look, I want to help you. I don't want your help. I want you to get out of here. Why don't you ever listen to me? God doesn't know from where to send me suffering anymore. He finds Schwarz in the street and he sticks him into my house. You call me a Schwarz one more time and I'll knock you on your ass. Arnold, get him out of here. Good night. Okay, baby. It's your life.
mouth on him like a sewer. You don't know what walks in this neighborhood, Arnold. Animals, madmen. So remember to lock your door the next time. I locked my door. You think I'm crazy? You don't think I'd lock my door? But how did he get in? Through the fire escape. I was in the kitchen. I turned around, and there he is, sitting at the... T Fanny, what happened to you? I feel like I am drowning, Arnold. I can't breathe. I... Lie down. Now, lie down. Now, does your chest hurt? Yes. Get my bag. Has she had any of this medicine within the last three hours? I gave her some before, but she wouldn't take. Well, what am I prescribing medicines for if you don't give it to her? Well, I gave it to her four or five times, but you know how stubborn she is. Funny, funny, you are feeling much better. I don't understand what happened. Doctor, what happened? In one minute, look how she turned. I... I'll be in the living room. Do me a favor. When you come here, don't pay so much attention to me. And who should I pay attention to? To him. To Moritz. He doesn't take care of himself. He's a fool. Now, if Fanny has any more difficulty, give her the dosage I prescribed on the bottle. And if by some miracle she sleeps, let me sleep also. Good night. Oh. Arnold. Arnold. Where can I reach you tonight if I need you? Don't need me. be at home. Officer. Officer. Yes? Could you tell me uh, where there's a drugstore? Next block around the corner. Thank you very much. Seven dollars? That's right. That's a lot of money. Well, it's a brand new drug. Could you make it a little cheaper for me? I'm sorry. We have to charge the same price to everyone. Drug manufacturer places a high cost on that, too. You know, there's very little profit in this item. Do you know where there's a discount store around here? Believe me, even if I did, it still wouldn't do any good. Price is the same anywhere you go. Wait a minute. Here's your prescription.
You wait here. Get out of here. Where's my prescription? I'll explain later. Mr. Levine, what did you pay for the medicine? I don't remember. Five dollars? Seven dollars? 
Squat. I don't remember. I hope, Mr. Levine, you didn't do anything crooked. What do you call crooked, Mr. Risky? I think, Mr. Levine, that somebody is out seven dollars somewhere. Look, man, you needed the medicine. You got the medicine. Thank you very much. But with stealing, I don't go along with. Man, you're a son of a bitch. Son of a bitch? What right have you got to call me that? I want you to get out of here. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Now get out, you hustler, you crook, you thief. <laughs> Yes, I'm a thief, I'm a crook, I'm a hustler. Count it. That's my food money. Man, I don't care what it is. You count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you come with me. Don't you want your teeth? Let's go. I'm very tired. Where are you taking me? They're going to take your ass over to that drugstore. And you're going to pay that poor bastard before he goes bankrupt. This is my food money. You honest? You don't eat. Go. What do you want from me? Leave me alone. I can't give my food money. Sure you can. It's the easiest thing in the world. Man, I envy you being so honest. All that goddamn honesty just hanging over your head like a great halo. Move. Lord, see me. I wonder what makes you white folks so honest. I wonder what makes you all so honest and all us black folks so dishonest. Mm -hmm. Ain't because we ain't got a pot to piss in, is it? Ain't because we ain't got nothing, is it? Ain't because somebody cheating us all the time, is it? I ain't cheating anybody. I'm an honest man. What I take, I pay. Yeah, you pay when you got the money. And when you don't have the money, you steal. You dig me, Pops? You steal. Mr. Levine. You steal. Mr. Levine, can't we sit down and discuss this? Move, man. You're not an angel. I'm an angel, and you better believe it, because I'm the only one you're ever going to get. Let's go. No, no. I don't want to go to the drugstore. Don't make me go to the drugstore. You better shape up with me, Mishkin, or both of us are going to get our asses cut off before the sun come up. Now, come on. I try to understand what you're saying to me. They give me a goddamn lousy job with you, Mishkin. Every white mother up there was going through them gates. But me? They put me on probation. Same kind of shit I've been having down here all my life. I don't know how to talk to you. What should I say? Forget it. That ain't your problem. Let's go. Where are you going? Upstairs. Uh, I don't want to go upstairs. Uh, sit down. Mr. Levine, I'd like to buy you a drink. A what? I'd like to buy you a drink. If there's no unearthly law against an angel having a drink, I'd like to take a dollar or two and buy you a whiskey. You mean you go spend your food money? Just one drink. Upstairs, Mr. No, 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 I don't want to go upstairs. Do you know where there's a bar around here? You want to go to a bar? <laughs> All right, we go to a bar. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we'll have a good drink, and everything will look better. There's <laughs> something else, Mr. <Mishkin. laughs> oh.
What did you say to that cop on the corner? I asked him where the drugstore was. But you knew where the drugstore was. You were going to turn me in, weren't you? To tell the truth, the idea occurred to me. So why didn't you? You didn't do anything to me except cause a little excitement. And why should one Jew turn in another Jew? And if I wasn't Jewish? Still, still you'd be a person. A very American, mister. I'll tell you something, Mr. Levine. Be a little patient of what's doing here. Everything will be better for you. They're not very nice to you now, but tomorrow they'll be ashamed of themselves and do better. Bullshit. Mr. Morris Miskin, Sally Turner. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Miskin and I, we're in a deal together. No, it's not straight. It's straight. Uh, 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 I owe him a pair of pants. He's bringing me some material, and I'm going to make him a pair of pants. Where? In the bar? Look, look, why don't we just go and have a drink together, huh? Mr. Levine! Mr. Levine! Here, enjoy yourself. I gotta get back to my wife. I left her alone too long. I'll see you again sometime. Nice being here. Good night. Blouse. I don't remember ever seeing it before, but it looks good on you. You've seen it a dozen times, Al. Five bucks for everything. say to you anymore, Al. What do you want, Al? I mean, you want me to say that everything is all right, that nothing makes any difference? Now, what do you want? I want it to be like it was. Like we was making it for the first time. Best day of my life. The best day. Rise through the shell of the gate of the shell of the
you doing, Maurice? I'm getting undressed. Why are you getting undressed? Because I'm very tired. I was on my feet all day. I want to go lay down. But I've been sleeping all day. I don't want to go sleep. What do you want to do? I want to talk. All right. Talk. I'm thinking about my brother, Aaron. He's a fool. His whole life, he's paying for his mistake. What mistake? That he married Pearl. She macht a Michigan. You're not listening to me. I'm listening, Final. I'm listening. Ruth should come back. One day, I will open the door. And Ruth is standing there. <laughs> Who is that? I don't know. Who is it? Yeah. Who is it? It's me, Michigan. What do you want? I want to talk to you. What do you want now? I want you to do me a favor. What? I could use an angel from hell. to collect. You give him something? He doesn't. Why should I give them something? Let them give me something first. Don't be so generous with my money. Uh. Why'd you bring me here? I want to talk to you. Well, what's the matter? We're talking in the bar. It's better here. We're talking too many goddamn bars. Come on, sit down, baby. I never noticed you complaining about it before. It's not the same as it was before. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I would like to see an angel from heaven. I would make a wish, and everything would be different. Watch the television. I have to go to the bathroom.
this anyway. Uh -huh. That's okay. It's all right. No. Ah. You're not going to me in somebody's back room, so just forget it. I didn't bring you here for that. Well, then for what? Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I've been thinking. There wasn't going to be any more to my life than what I've had up to now. What would I walk out of this world with? What would I have? Just what you've been working toward. Nothing. No. No, not nothing, baby. You. I'd have you. I'd remember you. But everything else was out of my mind, I'd remember you. What are you doing there? I'm making Sammy's suit. Why are you doing that now? You wanted Sammy's suit? I'm making Sammy's suit. You don't have to make it now. Make it tomorrow. Come to me. Getting dressed for. You wanted to go to sleep. You wanted to stay up. I wanted to stay up, but you wanted to go to sleep, and we'll go to sleep. We'll stay up. We're not tired anymore. Listen to me, Alexander. What we had was nothing. That's not true. You better face it, baby. It was lousy. And a few good days out of four years, that's love. And what the hell is one good day in New Jersey, one good morning in my apartment, a good minute somewhere else? Now, what's it all add up to? I should have been four good years. Four years, not half a dozen days. More than that. Tell me about it. Come on. Give me the times, Al. Give me the times. I thought there was more. I thought there was more. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? Suddenly I remember the first time I saw you working behind the counter in your father's store. Such a long time ago. Everybody in my cleaning place knew I had a girlfriend. My pockets were stuffed with the fruit you gave me from the store. You were so skinny and so shy. I never saw a man so shy. I was afraid of your father. Every time I came into the store, he looked at me like I was, I was a robber. You should have said something to me. From pressing suits I knew, but not from girls. I wasn't so used to speaking to girls. I thought such a pretty girl was already promised. I wanted to marry you. But I didn't know what to say. Do you love me, Al? Yes. No, not just words. I mean, inside. Do you mean what you're saying to me inside? Because if you do, I'm going to believe you. Now do you love me? I've always loved you. Then marry me, Al. Marry me. I don't want to remember what could have been. I want a future, Al. I want us to have a future. I can't marry you.
Listen, baby, come here. You walking out? That's right. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. You want a fast trick? You go hustle yourself up one on the street. They got a quick bang going on in every corner in this town. Always loved you. If you walk out on me, I'll have nothing. You sing that song to some other chick, man. Because that crap don't mean nothing to me. You dig? I've been listening to it for four years now. Seen it going up one wall and down the other. Out of a whole lifetime, all I have is you. You ain't got nothing left but your hustling. And baby, that don't mean nothing to me no more. Oh, shut up with that. And you want to run the streets number and the grocery man and the whores. Shut so up, you God just damn go it. right on. I've you given you more than five that. and dime. You get your belly cut somehow. What the hell are you telling me? You go die if you want to. But get out of my life. You get me nothing, man. in the apartment. Is somebody there, Morris? There's nobody here. I left one of the windows open and it blew a, win a door shut. I'll go close the window. Your girlfriend left? What's the matter? Mr. Levine, are you all right? You had a fight with your girlfriend? Morris? Tell me about it. Maybe I can help you. Morris? Uh, you wait here. I'll be right back. I had a strange feeling, Morris. Like a dream. Only it wasn't a dream. I saw my Rudy here. With her husband. And the little child in her arms. And I couldn't get up to give them something to eat. anymore. What are you now, if you're not an angel? You told me you were an angel? I believe you're an angel. Come on down. What a goddamn lousy, stinking joke to play. How the hell did they expect me to make you believe in me as an angel when I couldn't make anybody believe in me as a man? 
I believe you're a man. Come on down. I wanted to tell her that I loved her. That's all I wanted to do. Shit. Mr. Levine. Mr. Levine. Nothing. Nothing. A whole goddamn lifetime of nothing to show for it. What the hell did I ever want that was so great that I couldn't have it, huh? To stay alive? A stinking place to sleep? A couple of bucks in my pocket? Shit. Why don't we go downstairs? We can talk there. Oh, man. It's useless what we're doing here. I'd see some dude coming down the street in a new set of vines, and I'd say, yeah, baby, that's what you want. Or I'd see a caddy cutting out on the highway like it owned the world. And I'd say, yeah, baby, that's what you want. Everything like I was in the middle of a department store and everybody was grabbing and grabbing. And me, man, I jumped right in the middle with both hands and I was grabbing. And I didn't know what the hell I was grabbing for. To want something is only natural. You know what my whole life was, man. Just running and running on somebody else's track. And nothing ever coming up right. Nothing. Nothing ever meaning anything. Mr. Levine, you have meaning to me. I wish only good things should be for you. Please, Mr. Levine, let's go downstairs. Come. When I was down in the room with Sally, I began to forget. She kept reminding me of things I couldn't remember. All the lousy things she said I did to her. This morning, I, I remembered everything. Now it's all gone for Sometimes me. it's good we don't remember bad things. Oh! <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Be careful, Mr. Levine. Mr. Levine! <laughs> Mr. Levine! Mr. Levine! <laughs> what are you jumping around like this for? I can't take Listen, this. Listen, man. It won't make any difference. Of course, tomorrow I won't remember. I won't remember. You remember? Yeah! yeah! You remember. Only come down. <laughs> How about that, man? Tomorrow morning, there'll be nothing left of me. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I remember... we went to the beach. Uh, it was... Uh, who was... I remember... Uh, no, God damn it, I don't... It, it was... <laughs> I'm cold, Miskin. Come with me. Come to my house and be welcome. Why are you up? You're not supposed to be out of bed. I feel much better. with you, Morris? A friend. 
You are welcome. Mr. Levine is Jewish. I don't care. A friend is welcome. Annie? You know my name? Yes. I'm an angel. Have you come to take me away? No. I've come to give you life. Uh, uh, Mr. Levine? Help me get you a prescription. So I'm making him a pair of pants when he brings me some material. I didn't want to leave. I was in pain for a long time. I know. You cry. Why? I was lost. And God came after me. You wept so thank God. I was cheap. God would not cheat me. Kill wife to sign God. God be with you, Fanny. Give him some wine. Why? Why were you talking to him that way? Let him eat with you. I'll be gone in a minute. You shouldn't go without eating something. Like some wine? Yeah. Look at this place. Look what Fanny did here. Reminds me of my mother. One night she got up out of a sick bed, cleaned up the house, went in the kitchen, put a chicken in the pot to boil. While she was watching it, she died. Just like that. Fanny's not going to die, Michigan. You're a very kind person, Mr. Levine. I don't know what will be with me or my Fanella, but for you, I wish a new beginning. For all of us, life. Chaim. What's the matter? You don't like my wine? Uh, I was just thinking. What? I was just thinking that soon I'll be gone forever. You blink an eye, or the wind will blow, or a clock will sound, and it's over. Nobody will even know I was ever here. I'll remember you, Mr. Levine. Will you? Yes, I'll always remember you. The <laughs> guy. Ah, 
Now let's see what Fanny made for us. Matzo brai. You like matzo brai? I'll eat anything. I'm starving. She was so beautiful, I didn't think she ever was going to marry me. What do you mean, was? She still is. You should have seen that wedding. From my side of the family, there was no one. I came to this country alone. But from her side of the family, 10,000 relatives. And her relatives ate everything that wasn't still breathing. A half a million chickens, a half a million lamb chops, a half a million potato latkes, endless. You know what I ate? What? Nothing. A man doesn't eat at his own wedding. He runs around like a chicken without a head. Now, when you'll get married, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll never get married, Miskin. You'll get married. Nobody escapes. How can I get married when I'm dead? Mr. Levine? Mr. Levine? Mr. Levine? It was wonderful having you here this evening. But now I'm very tired. My back is killing me. And I'd like to go to sleep. So good night and maybe you'll come another time. No. No, I can't go. Why not? Something's happening. I feel it. I'm changing into something. Mr. Levine, you're not changing into anything. I can feel the difference. I'll never be what I was again. You'll always be what you were. No, never. From the moment Fanny looked at me, everything began changing. What has my wife got to do with you? Everything. She understood. Mr. Levine, my wife is a very sick woman. No. Oh, she was sick. She was dying. But now she will live. Don't make out of nothing something. No, but wait a minute. No, you saw it. Right here, in this room. The miracle. What did I see? The miracle. I saw nothing. Let me go to sleep. What do you mean, nothing? Fanny as well. I was sent here to do a miracle, and it was done. Mr. Levine, don't make me crazy. <coughs> The only thing that happened here was that a sick old woman dragged herself into the kitchen to make her something to eat. No. Oh. Oh, I won't let you do this. God damn it, don't wipe out my miracle, man. Don't destroy my miracle, Mishkin. What's the matter with your eyes? Why are you looking at me that way? What were you saying to me on the roof? I wasn't saying anything. I was just talking. No, you weren't just talking. You came after me. Why? I thought you were going to jump. What else could I do? No. It wasn't that. It had to be more than that. I stopped you because I felt sorry for you. You what? I felt pity for you. Shit on your pity. Who the hell are you to pity me? All right, I don't pity you. What did you see when you came into this room? I saw nothing. You lousy son of a bitch. I'm an angel. 
I'm an angel and you won't believe me. I don't need angels in my life. It's too late for angels. You're killing me. I never killed anybody. You're killing all of us. Leave me alone. I can never leave you alone until it's done. You're the one chance they gave me. You're my only hope. You're crazy, Levine. But if I don't cut it with you, they're going to kill me all over again. I deserve that one good thing should happen to me. All my life I've had nothing. What have I had? All my life suffering. With Ruthie, with my sick wife, with my broken back. Man, all I ever wanted was to stay alive. And you, you could save me. I wake up every morning praying to God that he finishes me off. Mishkin, if you don't believe in me, then there's nothing left for us. I can't believe anymore in anything. Then they knew. All along they knew that you would never believe in me. I never had a chance with you. And they hustled me. Why? What am I, a dog? An animal in the streets? First I should be tortured. And then I should believe it's too late! Too late! Stop it. Stop it. I will go to my grave cursing God for what he's done to me. You're killing me. I will never forgive him for what he's done to me. He's killing all of us. And we die! We die! We die! But I will never forgive him! Never! Never! Louis? It's you. Me? Did I wake you? I'm up. Well, let me in. What's the matter with you? You, you look terrible. What are you doing here? Uh, well, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, look, make me a cup of coffee. I want to have a look at Fanny. Fanny? Fanny's all right. You make the coffee. I'll make the medical judgments. Fanny. Fanny. Ah, 
I so in my angel. Now listen to me, Fanny. I'm going to call the ambulance to take you to the hospital. No. I don't want the hospital. I can't do anything for you here. I know. I'll die in my house. I get Morris. I'll be right back. No. I don't want him to see me. But I can't keep him out. A man has a right. Uh, everything for a lifetime we share. This I don't want to share with him. I was a lucky woman in spite of everything. And come to him someday. See what is happening with you. What is happening with my room? The coffee will be ready soon, Arnold. These are the Stefano. Hello. For this best of Christian and guest. You vote for the kochen essen. As I will have with the flesh, with the oifes, with all the nashkeit. As I will for dir nicht kochen. Wer wird es dir? Ich habe nie gegessen gestern vor einer langen Zeit. Die Märische Hing. Schon bei einem Frischstück. Es ist ein Hängerig. Es ist nein. Ich habe nie gegessen vor Reibig. Reibig. Bring me some soda from the grocery. I'm thirsty. I have any ice box. Mars. Do as she says. Well. Fala. 